Hey everybody, I can't think of a good reason not to have a barbecue every day, especially when it's as good as this. I'm making this incredible Korean kalbi that everyone's gonna love, so let's get started. I've got a big old batch of my own homemade kimchi that's just about ready to go and you can check out the channel and get this recipe and I can't think of a better way to crack into a fresh batch of kimchi than with some delicious grilled meats. So let's take a look at the ingredients for the kalbi marinade. I've got a half cup of soy sauce to which I'm going to add in one half cup of mirin. That's going to add a little bit of sweetness, but for some more sweetness, I'll add in a quarter cup of honey and you can use white sugar or brown sugar or whatever sweetener you like here. I've got some fresh ginger, a handful of garlic cloves and some onion and a very important ingredient is the Asian pear. Now you won't find this ingredient in a lot of recipes but I like mine spicy so I'm going to add in a couple of tablespoons of gochujang and this is a sweet and spicy chili paste that's just going to give this a little bit of bite that I really love. So we'll get these ingredients down into the blender, waz that all down into a nice slurry and get our meat marinating. I'm gonna peel the pear and cut this up into some chunks. I'm gonna use about half of that onion, all of that Asian pear, except for the core, of course, and the seeds. Looks like I've got six nice cloves of garlic. When you're marinating using fresh ginger, you wanna be kinda of careful. I'm not gonna put a whole bunch in here. I've just got this kinda of small marble-sized chunk. And that's because if you put in too much fresh ginger, it's actually got an enzyme in there called zingibane that tenderizes the meat. So if you use too much and let it marinate for too long, it can make the meat get mushy. Now, if you like it to be very gingery and don't want it to get mushy, you could add in more ginger, but pop that in the microwave until it gets nice and hot, and that'll deactivate that enzyme and you can use as much as you like. There's that half cup of soy sauce. Half cup of the mirin. That's about a quarter cup of honey. And that gochujang, couple of tablespoons. That should give me a nice little bit of heat. Oh, that's some sticky stuff. <laughs> that looks real good. Let's give it a little test. Oh yeah, that is really good. This came out just how I like it. It's got some nice heat to it, but I'm gonna be using some pretty fatty cuts of meat, so it's definitely not gonna be hot, but it will have a little bit of bite, which I love. Let's look at meat selection for the kalbi, and it's almost always made from short ribs. And when you go out, they're generally gonna be flank and cut short ribs, and that's where they slice across the bones like this, giving you that thin strip of meat with several bone chunks in there that are pretty fun to gnaw on. And those are great, they soak up a ton of marinade and you can cook them really fast so they're perfect for that kind of Korean barbecue where you're just cooking in the middle of the table, whipping them on and off of there, they're perfect for that. But for me, those things are overdone as fast as you can get them on and off of that grill. So I like to use short ribs that are cut the long way, giving me this big, thick hunk of meat that I can cook to rare or medium rare or however I like it. 
Now, I also did want to do some of those Flankenstyle ribs, but they didn't have any in my grocery store. That's fine. I just went around looking for a nice, really well marbled piece of meat, and this happens to be tri-tip, and I'm just going to slice those into some thin strips, and that's going to work out perfectly. And you can use whatever meat you like here, because that is how recipes work. There we go. I'll just cut these in half. Right down the middle. Those look absolutely perfect. And actually, when you get those flanking style ribs, what you pay for is half bone and fat. So this is gonna work out perfectly and it's actually a much better value. Now, all that's left to do is mix up that meat and the marinade. Get my nice big ribs down in there. Make sure they're nice and coated. Oh, 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 oh. And then my tri tip strips. There we go. I've got plenty of marinade to make sure everything is really nicely coated. And now this goes out in the refrigerator for at least four hours, but overnight is even better. Holy moly, you guys. I forgot to add in one of the most important ingredients. So, it's not too late. I'm gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of sesame oil. And I'll just kind of roll that around in there to get it mixed in. After that overnight soak, this stuff is looking and smelling awesome. I'm so glad I remembered to put in that sesame oil. It's a very important ingredient in this because it's packed with tons of flavor. So now all that's left to do is apply some heat to the meat. And this is always going to be cooked on a grill or over an open flame. So nice, hot, preheated grill. We're on one of those big boys. And those are real fatty, so they're gonna be prone to flare-ups. So you gotta kinda keep an eye on them. And these are gonna cook for three or four minutes on every side or until I get an internal temperature of right around 120. That looks really nice. Oh, then I'll hit side number two for a few minutes. It's really cold out here today, so I'm having to close down the top while I cook this. Go again, another flip. No flare ups yet, but you really got to keep an eye on it. Because once those fats start to render out of here and hit that flame, they will just ignite, and then the sugar in that marinade will turn this thing into a little lump of coal before you know it. So don't turn your back on these. Now I've got a really nice sear all around my short rib but my temp is not even near where I want to be for this to be done. So I'm going to kill the heat directly under that. We'll shut this lid and let these outside two burners finish cooking that off for a few minutes. And if you're using a charcoal grill, just keep a nice cool area and move it off to the side and cover that thing up. That looks just right. I'll take this guy off. And that's going to have to rest for 5 or 10 minutes, and that's plenty of time to cook the thin ribs. Now it's all blazing hot again. And these are only going to take a couple of minutes on each side. I've got my two styles of rib here. This one's been resting for about 10 minutes. This one doesn't need any time to rest at all. It's so thin. So let's cut into these and see how we did. So I'll separate that guy from the bone. Ooh, I like what I see there. Oh yeah. Beautiful. 
medium rare on this one. You don't want to go above that or this can get really tough on you. That looks excellent. And this guy, of course, so thin. I got it about medium, but it's going to be real tender from that marinade and that nice marbling. So we'll hit those with a little toasted sesame seed garnish. Of course, I got my kimchi here. Now, let's see how we did. Oh, wait. Check out that bite. Mmm-hmm. Oh man, that is so juicy <laughs> and beefy. It's really rich from the fat content. Got a nice char on the outside and the marinade is bringing in some great flavor. Oh yeah. Mm, wash that down with a little kimchi. That is perfect. Now, our flanken style. Woo! <laughs> oh yeah! Now that one, still really tender, but it has so much flavor from that marinade because it's such a thin cut. Oh yeah! Now that is a beautiful bowl. Thanks for watching.